Florida and Texas, like cats really be flying. We out here chasing rabbits. Man. Yeah, yeah, I know. yeah. yeah. marking on. The problem <laughs> is that nah, Florida, Florida football's a track meet. The problem yeah. is that Louisiana yeah. has better football players, like just based on size. They're big, you know. But there's big people in Oklahoma, Texas, they, they, and all that. We there's don't have big people, people here. though. Yeah, like y'all got more speed. Like here, it's like a, it's a track meet. That's a sideways comment, bro. That's <laughs> a sideways comment. But we do the research. We go to Hall of Famers. We can start really getting to it. The, 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 the thing is this, you guys are historically better, but as time goes on, we're catching up. You know what I'm saying? Like historically, yes. Like if you go back in but the day, you, like in your time, in your so age. We, but if we say, three years like, apart. So we're gonna, stop, said, so we're gonna stop producing athletes and y'all gonna keep producing. Like Louisiana now, was never in the conversation of best football states. It was Florida, California, Texas, Texas, Texas Georgia. Everybody knows that. That's, but it's different it was now. In that order. No, it's not. It's look at the, the look at the now. amount of people in the league. I had a small run. Honey Badger got y'all acting funny. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up. Limitless. Take a simmer cap pin in it. I thought they hear the witness it. Get my people feeling militant. Way I'm finna get me up. On the mission, get me up. Knowing me, I got the key. On the vision, I can trust. Trust. Limitless. Take a simmer cap pin in it. I thought they hear the witness it. Get my people feeling militant. Way I'm finna get me up. On the mission, get me up. As usual, the pivot starts starts off the rails, but we're gonna we're gonna get it back here, right? Um, I don't know how I always end up on the show with all of these people from Florida, mm -hmm. right? You're a Georgia guy, but you go to school in Florida, yeah. Channing, Freddie T, Florida guy. You stay at home, you go to Florida. Raheem Mostert, uh, running back of the Miami Dolphins. I would name all the teams that were, I mean, it's been it's the Eagles, it's what it's been the Ravens, it was, I think, the Second Dolphins. Stint with my, Dolph yeah. Dolphins before, uh, the Bears, um, 49ers, obviously, where you had one of the greatest um, NFC championship games of all time uh, from the position. And now back to Miami. Obviously, I'm RC. Welcome to The Pivot. Uh, we're excited to bring you just an in-season look at what some of these players are dealing with, what they've gone through to get here. Thanks to DraftKings. Thank you to Happy that our sponsors, everybody that subscribed. We appreciate y'all. Don't forget to like. Uh, and like we always say, man, and this, this is actually the most uh, apropos time to say this, uh, Anybody can podcast, but not everybody can pivot. And Heem, I want to start with you because I'm an undrafted guy. People like these humans don't understand what that what that life is like, and and being cut and having to deal with and go through all of those things. How did you continue to fight? How did you continue to believe in you that you could be what you were today when you were going through those things? Yeah, um, you know, first and foremost, I I like to take the time to say thank you guys for having me. Um, you know, I, I watch you guys' show and you guys do a great job, you know, just trying to get the perspective of, you know, us young men and athletes and trying to just just talk football or even life. I think that's the most important thing in regards to the way guys move um, on and off the field. And you guys are definitely doing that by capturing a lot of different things. What you said, Ryan, about, you know, coming in undrafted, you know, you, you fellow undrafted guy, yeah. you know, you have to turn that, that notch, that dial, um, where, you know, it's all about how can I get on this team the best way possible. And for me, um, it was special teams. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of a cliche thing. You know, you hear it over and over again about how, hey, look, you know, you got to, if you want to make this team, you got to, if you want to make that 53-man roster, you got to do it by special teams. And I took that to heart when I first got into the league. You know, I, in college, I didn't really have the best, you know, outcome that I thought I could, whether it be a coaching change, you know, me focusing solely on track my junior year, um, which led to me being um, a starter uh, my senior year. And then eventually I fizzled out at the running back position to now it's like, hey, you know, yeah, I went undrafted. Now it's all about how can I make these teams? So for me, I took into account, hey, look, you know, I got to hustle. I got I to gotta be able to provide. Um, you know, for myself and, and the legacy I want to leave. And that was, that was to just be great. You know, growing up watching, watching Fred, man, you know, I, it's an honor even to sit next to you, mm -hmm. truthfully, because, awesome. you know, I was growing up in Daytona, you know, that's mm -hmm. two hours away from Jacksonville. So mm -hmm. for me to watch you and, and Maurice, man, that just, 
man, I talked to Maurice a couple times here and there, and it's finally awesome to see you face to face, you know what I mean? So it's a blessing, but you guys gave me the hope too, um, whether you whether you, you want to believe that or not, but you guys really did that for me. Um, and yeah, I just show gratefulness. I think that was the biggest thing. You know, when you come into a league where it's nothing but dogs, it's nothing but, you know, guys that can actually make those plays, um, and they've been doing it at these prestigious universities, and um, they're getting drafted first, second, third. I mean, even, set, you know, sixth and seventh round. It's just like, hey, when I get my op, yeah, I can't look back. And that's what I did, you know, all these years. You know, I didn't, I didn't get that running back role until my fourth year in the league, you know, 2018, the third year. Um, I didn't get my first handoff. And so, you know, that actually counted. I look back and I'm like, hey, once I get that out, I ain't looking back. So, so, but I'm sure to to go through those experiences, being uh, signed, undrafted, signed by Philly, mm -hmm. uh, released there after the preseason. You come to Miami, then you're here for a few weeks, mm -hmm. right? They call it a cup of coffee yeah. for yeah. people at home that don't need a few weeks. Then uh, after Miami's Baltimore and then Cleveland, right? Mm -hmm. All in 2015. Yeah. Um, at some point, that has to be extremely frustrating. How do you maintain that drive and that desire to say, I'm, I'm going to fulfill this dream mm -hmm. no matter what? Yeah. So when I, when I came into the league, um, yeah, going through, you know, four teams my, my rookie year, um, I knew I had the ability because, you know, if, if a team sees you, they see the opportunity, especially like, you know, an undrafted guy. They see the opportunity that, you know, I possess. I'm, I'm a great special teams player. You know, I'm, I'm a... I'm going to do what I got to do because I got that mindset of being a dog. I, I mean, growing up in Florida, you know, we were talking about, you know, Florida. Growing up in Florida, there's only one thing down here, really, and that's that's football. Yeah. You know, you don't hear too many basketball, great basketball players. Now, I'm not knocking those basketball players that did come out and did, you know, wonderful things in the NBA. But when you think of Florida, you think of actual real deal football. And that was the, the best case in for, the world. The best in the world, exactly. <laughs> so, um, you know, <laughs> Clark's going to have a little <laughs> offense to that. But. Well, Right, what what click? You talking about eighteen when you got your real chance, and then like RC brought up the you know we all saw the NFC Championship like crazy. Now your name like the fastest running back in the league, like everybody knows your name. But Freddie hit. I think what was it? Forty nines were your seventh team in two years. Yeah, seventh team in two years. Well, what clicked? Like what at you that know, moment? Was, what happened? It was a situation too, because at the time you know I was with Philly, and that was with Chip Kelly. So when Chip Kelly, you know, um, got fired and then he got picked up by the Niners the following year, um, you know, he stayed in touch. He was checking in on me. Hey, look, I, I know what this guy can do, calling my agent. Like, you know, when I get that, that window, I'm, I'm going to bring him on. So I actually met him in Orlando. Yeah, it was, ever since then, it was just like, all right, I'm going to give you a first op. And he gave me that first op. You know, he was fighting for me. It was, it was, it was towards the end of that year, too, my second year. Um, team wasn't doing all that well. The Niners weren't doing all that well, and he just jumped in and was like, "Hey, I'm trying to fight for you. Like, you know, I'm, I'm talking to the GM to get you on board. Let's yeah. let's go. You know, you can't you can't you know show me wrong. You can't prove right. you got to prove them that they made a mistake on you. And yeah, I was able to. I did some punt ret punt return deals, and then next the following year, bam. I think they say um, one thing that's uncoachable that not a lot of guys have. Is speed. So mm -hmm. speed was able to sustain you yeah. and prolong those opportunities. Mm -hmm. So let's pivot back to college. You know, uh, I think you were 60 meter and 200 meter indoor champ. Mm -hmm. But they say you were second fastest after Tariq, your teammate, Tariq <laughs> Hill. What do, you, what do you say about that? Well, stat, statistical wise, I'm faster than Tariq. You, you can check that on the, on the paper itself. Um, I actually ran against him. Uh, well, we were in different heats in the indoor track meet in, um, in Albuquerque. And, uh, yeah, it was, he, he won that race. I wasn't really prepared for that because, you know, I've, I was so dialed in on, on football in itself because, like, my junior year, um, we had got a new head coach, and I was a receiver at the time. So, like, you know, me, I'm thinking, okay, you know, new coach, he going to see me. You know, I don't – did jet sweeps. I was doing, you know, similar to what Debo's doing now, you know, the role that he playing. So I was doing that, you know, for my university at Purdue. And uh, yeah, come my, my junior year, he wasn't really looking at me at receiver. And so I went into his office, I asked him, hey, look, you know, what do you think about me switching over to running back position? Cause I think that that's gonna bring me the better opportunity. 
And he was like, I mean, I'm all up for it, but you know, you're gonna have to work a little bit because we had like other guys that was still good too. Um, but you know, going into that role and then thinking about track, you know, track was that getaway for me. Because okay. I always did that, you know, even in high school. I ain't run till like my junior year in high school. And the track coach kept asking me my freshman year, sophomore year, hey, Raheem, come on, join the team. I was like, I'm worried about football because I started playing when I was seven. So um, hit the track my junior year. And I, truthfully, I was actually a, a 300 hurdle guy. Mm -hmm. And I did 300 hurdles um, and this blew up on, on 100 and 200, you know. But um, yeah, my junior year, that was definitely the, the, the pivotal moment for me. Um, going into you know my senior year, where I had a lot of a lot of good things that was being said about me being the fastest guy in college, and um, you know backing that claim up with what I was doing both indoor and outdoor track. So um, you ain't never think about running track, like man. track over football, because like yeah. yeah, we know the injury history. Mm -hmm. You don't get hurt in track. I know <laughs> I ran three the 300 hurdles one time and I damn almost had an asthma attack and I was the last <laughs> time running it. But you don't get injured injured. You ever thought yeah. about picking track over ball? So uh, it's a funny story that you brought that up. When I was coming out 2015, um, I'm sitting at, at my apartment at Purdue. Um, my wife, my girlfriend at the time, she uh, sitting next to me. I get an email from uh, uh, Team USA and they asked me to be on, you know, the track team. And I'm like, man, it's a great opportunity. Mind you, I'm watching the draft too. So like in my head, I'm thinking like, okay, well, where is this gonna play out for me? Now I can choose football, something that I've been doing since I, I was a little kid, or I can run track, you know, may or may not pan out the way I want it to, but at least I know I can go out on my own terms if I do decide that. And so we, I was having that conversation with her. I was like, hey, you know, what do you think? She was like, honestly, you know, whatever your heart is determined, like you go out there and I know you're going to give it your 110%. And I was like, football has always been there for me. I'm just going to stick with that, whether I get drafted or not. And look at me now, <laughs> I'm paid <laughs> off. Mentioned, you know? He mentioned, he mentioned the, the injuries and all of us have dealt with certain things, but I understand what it's like to wait for your opportunity. You know, you keep saying, you know, getting that op. Like I know for me, it was going to Washington and playing for a coach who didn't care how we got there. Mm -hmm. And his thing was, if you can play, if you can help us, you're gonna play. And so I always was like, okay, if I go out there and do what I have to do, I get my opportunity. I also know that opportunities for us look differently, mm -hmm. right? Whereas you, if you're a first rounder or you're a top 10 picker, you're one of those guys, you have a career to prove to everybody that you can't play. Right. right, you got to prove the one team that you can't play. Somebody else is going to say, I remember when I scouted him and when I evaluated him, how good I thought he was, I'll give him a chance. For us, it's you can go out and have a great game. If that guy who they drafted comes back, hey, he's ready to play. Mm -hmm. You're on the back burner. You finally get to that point where you're becoming a household name. San Francisco 49ers go to the Super Bowl. You guys beat one of the, the greatest in all time and Aaron Rodgers in the NFC Championship, and it's largely based on what you were capable of doing. Mm -hmm. Like, I know what that feels like. Like, oh, it's about to be my time. Like, I'm finally going to get to show the world that I've always been this. Yeah. And then you start getting hit with the injury bug, and you have the huge injury that, you know, eventually, you know, you leave San Francisco and you come here and now you're healthy. What was it like starting to build and starting to grind to get your name to be one of those household names and then kind of have that opportunity taken from you with injuries. Yeah, so yeah, you guys know about the injury bug when you, you know, me, I'm like at the highest of high, right? You know, I'm I'm working my way up into a role where everybody's seeing me as a starter. Everybody's seeing me as this guy that, you know, could be a difference maker. And when that, that rug gets swept up under you, it's like a, for me, I knew that it was one of those things where I was determined to get back to that level. like. People can talk, people can say whatever they want about me, but like at the end of the day, I gotta look myself in the mirror and be happy with the product that I produce. So if I'm not gonna go out there, if I'm gonna go out there and you know not produce at a high level, I'm doing myself a disservice. I'm doing the organization a disservice who, who took that chance on me. I'm doing my family a disservice. I got three little boys. Mm -hmm. Like if you got kids and you understand what that's like, yeah. you know. They I get, looking at daddy. They looking at daddy. Yeah. Like, my son, every time he come up to the stadium, I come out that tunnel, he in a certain section that I know where he at. He raising his arms up, you know, 
be strong, daddy. Like all those little moments right there, mm -hmm. just like it's impactful for me to get back on my feet, to get get out there and get get on that grind, especially on that field. Like you gotta have that heart and determination because at the end of the day, that's that's all you can stand on, really. How you does know? how does that that affect you? And this is like my brain works in a weird way. This is like way away from from football. Uh, you know, we all have kids and we have our relationships uh, with our children. Uh, I had kids early, so my son got to be there for everything. And he was, he broke us down in the Super Bowl huddle. He broke us down for every playoff walkthrough, like those experiences. You know, when you look at your boys and at home, you are just daddy. But sometimes when you put those pads on, it's kind of, it's, it's a superhero costume, right. right? Your kids believe that daddy's better than everybody. Your kids and your, your your wife and your family believe that because they've seen you work, that you deserve everything that they've seen you work for. Mm -hmm. What is it like having to deal with some of those lows and go home and look your boys in the face and, and, and be a, a husband to your wife, knowing what you're dealing with internally inside this building can't impact what you are for them. Yeah, it, it can't impact. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy too, because like I was having this conversation with teammates too, um, you know, because I'm I'm an older guy on this team um, and we have a young a young group of guys, but you know, they ask me all the time, like, how do you how do you deal with like being at home and then, you know, football? And I tell them straight up, like, I got a 30 minute car ride. <laughs> you know, I could ease my mind on, on a lot of things, especially, you know, coming from home or coming from work. So um, I think that that definitely boils down to is like, hey, how can you how can you separate what's going on with both the aspects and just really dial in on yourself? You know, it, it's one of those inner those inner strengths that I believe in, like I can go out there, I'm mentally tough, I'm mentally capable of doing it, but like I literally physically, I got to get my body right too. And like you said, with, when they lose to that injury bug too, it's like, man, my kid's looking up to me. So I got to take it. If I, that means I have to stay here for an extra two and a half, three hours to take care of my body now, especially cause I'm that upper, that upper guy, you know, in regards to age, then I got to do what I got to do because I can't go home feeling sore. I can't go home looking at my kids and being like, hey, daddy, I don't know if daddy's going to be up for the challenge tomorrow. You know what I mean? So that's where I get my motivation from is like, just stay here, do the little things, stay here and get right. So that way, when you do go home, hey, your kids see you happy. You know, everybody in the house is happy because nobody wants to come home to, you know, an uh, angry person. Uh, you yeah. know what I mean? So. Drink you some wine. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, wine is definitely a good solution. I'll tell you that. Hey, bro, why Miami, though? I know I know McDaniel had the connection yeah. in, San, you know, in, in San Fran, but why Miami? Why did you choose here? The reason why I chose Miami, honestly, is because, um, you know, they're one game away every year. These past two years, they've been one game away from the playoffs. Now, as y'all know, when you hit them playoffs, you can have a great little run. I've witnessed that with San Fran. You know, the year before, we were, what, 4-12? and 12? Yeah. And then we went on an eight-game win streak the following year, 2019. Went on an eight-game streak. And then next thing you know, hey, we in a dance, baby. So if I could help the team with just one game, like, I, that's ultimate for me because I already know what I'm going to do in the playoffs. Yeah. Like, that's already been proven. But, like, if I could just help this team – me personally, if I could help the team, and then of course with you know Mikey, yeah. it, it, it's always good to have a good connection. But that's that's my that's my goal is to help this team with that one game, so that way I can go to the playoffs. But with McDaniel too, because I'm he's due to us. I li we live down here. We live we in Miami, dude. But uh, RC covers every team, and it uh, proofs in the pudding with the you know with the wins and losses and all that stuff. But yeah. He seems like he knows what the hell he's doing. You question a lot of young coaches, especially first year coaches, but young dudes. You, you know what I'm saying? I think I'm I think we're all older than Mike yeah, McDaniel. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, did you did, did you see that in him in San Fran? Did you know that when he got here, he he could run a team, he could run an organization? Yeah, just based off of the conversations that I had, because you know, he a run game coordinator mm -hmm. in San Fran. And he was there for about five years. And then last year he got the role as the offensive coordinator. So I already knew, you know, with me, I mean, come on, I'm trying to get little nuggets here and there on what the game plan is so that way I can perform, you know. When that NFC Championship game, I blew up on the scene. He was the reason, you know, I, I sat in them hours with him in that office and I was like, hey, 
what, what, what's Green Bay defense? How they running? Like, what's the D-line talking about? Are they, they three, four style defense. I already know Preston Smith on the edge. I already know they got Zadarius Smith on the, on the other end. So like, how can we attack these boys? And yeah, we got, we got some playmakers. We can get this done. So just communicating with him. And I'm like, hey, this, this dude really knows what he's talking about. Like X's and O's, he know exactly what he's talking about. So like, that was the perfect solution for me. I was like, all right, well, Let's see how this transpires from run game coordinator. Now he the OC. Look what he did last year with Kyle. I mean, you know, Kyle's the brains of everything too, but like he the real brains behind the scene too that people don't know about. And then come to find out he interviewing for the job. I'm like, what? Like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, you talking about Mikey. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we talking about the same Mikey. Like, and they're like, yeah, he, you got some words for him? I'm like, yeah, yeah, this man, he legit. So He's just a few years uh, older than you are. Yeah. Uh, you know, and they tell us, when you look at the average lifespan of a player's career in the NFL, it's around three to three and a half years. You know, and if you're lucky enough to, to go past that, and then you hit that wall, they say 30 is usually the, the age that most players decline. Yeah. But that expedites itself for the running back position. And you're right here at 30. Yeah. Looking at the trajectory of your career, being an undrafted guy, having to pivot and go through, you know, all those different challenges, finding a landing spot in San Fran. Now you're here in Miami. You've had your share of injuries. What's your mindset when you hear, you know, those things in the media or just knowing that 30 is that age that usually comes with a rapid decline? Like, what's your mindset and, and your approach to your health and the things you have to do to keep pushing forward? Yeah, so... <laughs> It might sound stupid to like a lot of people. Um, well, it won't but, sound stupid to me because I've yeah, been there. Yeah, but. yeah, you've been there. So <laughs> I said a lot of, you know, a lot of people. But my mind says like I'm 30. You know, I ain't get, I ain't really get the production that I did early on in my career, um, which you know prolonged my career a little bit longer. But you know, I'm 30. I'm, I feel like I could be the best damn 30 year old playing this game than anybody has ever played the game. Like that, and that's my mindset, right? Because like, I'm always, I'm, so I always wanna chase a gold jacket. Now statistically, that might not be the case because of where I'm at, you know, yardage, all that good stuff. Like, it is what it is, but I'm still gonna have that mindset of, okay, how can I get this gold jacket? Because th ultimately that's what I want. You know, a lot of guys want the fame, the money, you know, everything that comes with being a professional athlete. But my mindset is, I want a gold jacket, so how can I get that accomplished? Well, if that means, you know, you, you got to do a little bit extra, do a little bit extra. If you got to watch film, watch a little bit of extra film. If you got to get your body right, shit, get your body right. And like I said, I, that, that's where I came from. That's how I grew up. Like, don't just half-ass anything. Like, don't just dip your foot in a pool and expect it to be cold. Like. Just jump in. You ain't. You don't know if it's gonna be warm. You don't know if you know. I, I've been through all these different challenges. Why would I settle? I can't settle. I mean, you come here and you know it's it's a dang four by one team. You know, you know once they add you, fastest back in the league. You obviously have you know you have Jalen Waddle. You have uh, Tyree Kill. You're, you're great at tight end with Mike Gesicki. Uh and obviously Tua Tonga Valoa is a huge part of that. An entire off season. Everybody pointed to this as an evaluation year for Tua Tonga Valoa and what he can do to help the Miami Dolphins reach the, the heights that you believe they can reach, which made you want to be a part of this organization. You guys have the hot start, the, the huge win against Baltimore, you know, uh, where you guys come back um, in the second half. And then we obviously know what happens uh, to Tua Tonga Valoa uh, against Buffalo. Um, then against Cincinnati, something you never want to see whether you truly understand football and the toughness that it takes to play it or not. What was the overall feeling when you have to watch that, when you guys are now taking the field without your leader, and it is the Teddy Bridgewaters and the Skylar Thompsons, knowing what Tua was already doing this season for the team? Yeah, um, Tua, man, he's just, his perseverance and, you know, him being, since him being in the league, he's always, you know, had that mantra of, hey, look, like, I can get the job done, I just need my number called. And, you know, I can't really speak on the past Dolphin years that he's been here. Um, but all I see is just resilience out of that guy. You know, he wants to be in a position where 
is tough. He wants the, the adversity to strike because as you can see, he, he, he thrives through that. So like when that, that whole thing happened, you know, when we played against the Bengals, you know, we all were scared because, you, you know, if you check the replay, all that, and the way it looked, it didn't look good. Yeah. Especially me and, I'm, I mean, me and Tyreek just got done running routes and he took a sack. Yeah. So then you see him just, me and Reed run, like running back to the huddle, you know, we seeing the, the motion and everything and we like, oh man, like that's our brother right there. So it was kind of tough, you know what I mean? To go back out there and play, but then it's that next man up attitude that you gotta have. So, you know, Teddy comes in and he started killing it. So it's just like, it's a trickle down effect. And, and that's what you need in the organization. Two has been able to do that, you know, in regards to like the past with him and Fitz Magic, you know, him learning under him and all that stuff. And then when he gets his op, you know, you see what he can do. So just have to have that, that mantra for him. And he's been able to do a, a great thing for that. Yeah, and having him back, just having that guy. And we know everybody in this league can play. You can play, you ain't up here. You ain't, nobody has a contract that can't play. But now having two are back, RC hit it on the head. Big wins, bet Buffalo win. I'm, yeah. I don't even jump up and down during <laughs> that, during games. I'm sitting at the bar jumping up and down when that clock ran out. Yeah. I said, oh, they don't got enough time. Yeah. <laughs> they don't got enough time. <laughs> and then you have the low. Now having two are back, like, how much does it help? And not, you know what I'm saying, not bad mouthing anybody, but just having that man back in that huddle, knowing what he could do. Seeing the fourth quarter of Baltimore game, like we all saw it, how much does Tua help coming back? It's a lot of help. Um, he he just comes back, and it's just like an aura around the whole huddle. Like we had practice with him earlier today, and like you could just tell the aura and like the demand that he's asking throughout his players, like his teammates, his brothers. Like it, it's different. Like y'all know that huddle. Y'all know that guy that come in, and y'all like, oh yeah, we got to rally around this guy. That's definitely Tua, um, and. I'm excited, man. You know, we got a good game coming up this week. So uh, it's going to be a great opportunity for not only him, but for the whole team to bounce back and get back to what we know, what, what we've been able to do, you know, the first three games. So, um, and, and we understand the importance of, you know, getting that dub, but it starts with Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you know, going into Saturday and leading up to Sunday. So. Yeah, I really, I want you guys to to get it right. Not this week, but like after this week, mm -hmm. I really want <laughs> things to. Week. <laughs> I really want things to to work out they for y'all. Wear the Steelers ass. I hope not. Like I, I'm, I'm just being, I'm just being really, honest. You didn't really peep the colors that he was like, wearing in the in the <laughs> building though. In the oh, building, like, come on, man. In the hey, building. Hey, bro, you watch the show. The actual colors are black yeah, and gold. I understand that, <laughs> hey, but come we are on show. Now. We are a show of winners, <laughs> and so we picked winners colors oh, yeah. when you. You, when, you know, listening to you talk about Tua, it, it, it resonates with me because I understand that you know, right? You, you, you've been to the Super Bowl. You've, you've been on the fields with, with the, the Aaron Rodgers and, and playing against other greats at that position, also playing with Jimmy Garoppolo, who took you to two NFC championships. And now having Tua back and you mentioning you came here to get that one win that puts you in the tournament. I mentioned all the things that you guys have in the skilled players' positions on offense. Obviously, bringing over to Ron Armstead to anchor down uh, the left side of that line. Defensively, a team that can blitz, a team that can cover, run sideline to sideline and tackle, rush the quarterback. When you look at the ceiling for this team, after being on a team that you've seen do it before, you've seen reach the biggest game in football, do the Miami Dolphins have what it takes to reach that pinnacle. I mean, yeah, if, if, if you're in the building, you understand it, that we do have what it takes. Um, and it, we've, been, we've been down with some unfortunate events, man, that just, you know, we can't really control, but like at the same time, you know, you just gotta, gotta go into it with an open mind. Now, I will say this, you know, this, this team, and some people might take it the wrong way, but this team is way more talented than that 2019 year that we went to the Super Bowl. Two, th wait, time out though. Yeah. That's crazy. I mean, really? if you look, it's, I mean, the defense is just like, they shut it down. I mean, this, this past game, like we didn't get the win, but I mean, they forced 10 punts in a game. Like that's like almost unheard of really. And they've been, they did, they, they did, they, they did their part. You know, it's, it's on the offense. But like I said, you know, it's, it's different when you got 
got that quarterback that, that's missing, that missing piece. It's, it's like that energy, it just electrifies throughout the entire offense. Like in, even in the building, I mean, y'all know, I mean, y'all, y'all, y'all can feel it. So it, it, I will say that this team is definitely, you know, got, got a little more talent than that, that 19 year, but we just got to put those pieces together. And it, it don't really mean much. I mean, think about, you know, the Browns a couple of years ago, they, they had a, a stacked roster too, and they weren't able to get it done. But, you know, I hate to say that, but it is what it is. Like you said, it proves in the pudding. You know, as a running back, we all admire other running backs and, and you know, different running styles and abilities. Um, who are your top guys in the, in the league right now? My top guys in the league right now? Well, definitely, uh, I would say Nick Chubb. Yeah, yeah he, I think that he does an unbelievable job with the ball in his hands. Um, Saquon is definitely hitting his stride right now, and I love to see that, especially what he's been going through since you know his rookie year. Um, I would Najee. I think Najee is definitely a good back as well. Um, yeah, I mean that's there's a there's a lot of good backs. We cannot move past DraftKings, and we got a deal for you again. Any new customer signing up and placing a five dollar wager on that pregame money line, you use the promo code Pivot, you get. $200 in free bets. Can't beat this deal, Chan. 200? And if you're in a state where sports betting is not available, go to DraftKings Daily Fantasy. They have been innovating ways to win money for you during this football season. And basketball is here now, baby. Let's get that bread in the, in the basketball and the football. That's what we do. I like the Daily Fantasy Channel, but I love the SGPs. That's the same game parlay. You can customize your own player or team props to, to, to fit however you want to play it. But the same game parlays, that's how you double up and get that real money. Now remember, you new customers, if you sign up using the promo code PIVOT and you make a $5 pregame bet, any football wager, you get $200 in free bets. And remember, more sports are starting. There's baseball, there's basketball. Jump into DraftKings. They trying to give you money, but more importantly, trying to give you fun. Let's get back to the show. With that, those guys that, you know, will aspire to get there, you know, guys that are probably at home watching this, uh, looking at the direction your career had gone in. You know, we, we have a, uh, one of our sponsors is DraftKings. Mm -hmm. But RC and I, we came up with something, the undrafted Kings. <laughs> uh, what, what's, uh, what's one message, you know, would you give, you know, a young player at home who didn't get drafted coming out of high school, you know, what's one thought you would leave them with? Yeah, so, you know, one thought that I would leave them with is, you know, don't ever give up. Um, it may not go the way you think it is at the moment, you know, but the only thing that you can honestly do is, is put, it, put forth your effort. You know, your effort is your legacy. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you have a great effort and you're gonna have a great legacy, I really believe that. And that's something that I've been able to do, you know, with my my legacy now, I've I've dealt with all kinds of stuff in my life, and you know I I can't never hold that against me. You know I I can only move past it and always think of the outcome, think of positivity, because at the end of the day, that's that's all you can really stand on. For sure. So um, I would definitely say just have a great attitude about things. You know it may not work out the way you envisioned it to be, but if you still had that grind mindset and and to keep going and to keep fighting, it's going to pay off. Man, y'all two should have just balled in college like me and Fred. <laughs> should have. First off, <laughs> first off, I was cold. should have just balled in college. When I left college, I had the most tackles of any DB leaving college. But so you were I, there for eight years. I was there for four, like everybody else who plays. All of us don't leave as sophomores and go fishing because Mel Kuyper said we was going to get drafted <laughs> in the first round. Uh, anyway. Like, you know, I was thinking about you saying, you know, you're talking about, uh, you know, like, don't give up, right? And the AFC East, historically, at least to the last, through the last two decades, has been the New England Patriots division. That's a team you guys have beat. Mm -hmm. uh, coming into this year, it's become the Buffalo Bills division. Uh, with Josh Allen, the, the Stephon Diggs, uh, obviously Von Miller defensively, like a, a complete team, another team y'all had the opportunity uh, to beat. 
the Jets now are all of a sudden good. You know, so the, this division has gone from one of those divisions where it always seemed like a one or a two team race to where all four teams are competitive. When you look at where you guys sit now at three and three, what is it going to take if it's not that we find a way to catch the Buffalo Bills and win the AFC East? What is it going to take for you guys to finish in a place where you can get one of those wild card spots? Or how do you see you guys moving through the AFC East to get one of those wild card spots so you can be in the dance at the end of the season? Because when you look at this division, which people used to always count for the New England Patriots and say, oh, the New England Patriots are going to win six games, right? They're going to beat Miami. They're going to beat Buffalo. They're going to beat the Jets. It's not like that anymore. All of these teams are competitive. When you look at the division, how do you guys stack up? I mean, we, we beat supposedly the, the team that's supposed to make it to the Super Bowl. Um, and that in itself tells you the determination that we have. You know, we're not a team to, you know, I, don't, I hope people don't take us as a, a team that you can just pat the stats because we are not that. that that's changed. Like our attitude, that everything's changed in this building. Um, and it starts with the guy that, that's controlling it, like you said, Mikey. You know, he has that conviction that, hey, we're a damn good football team, and we just got to go out there and prove it. And we've been able to do it. But now, like I said, once, once we're getting certain guys back and healthy and, you know, we're gonna, we just got to take off. You know, any given Sunday, you know, you, can, you, you hear that all the time. Like, it, it's any given Sunday. No matter who the opponent is, they might statistically might be better than you, but it might not be their day. So that's the mindset that you just have to, have to take, especially us. We're taking that mindset of, hey, look, one week at a time, and then we can control only what we can control. Moving, moving forward, we ain't, look, we ain't worried about, oh, we got to beat this team in order to get in, in this category. We got to do this, that. No, just one week at a time and one game at a time. Yeah, we mentioned uh, you being, you saying, you know, you're faster than Tyreek and, and those things. You got an opportunity uh, to play with Debo, mm -hmm. who, you know, who was younger, uh, you know, when you guys made your run, uh, you know, those couple of years. But obviously last year he was a huge part of helping you uh, get to the NFC Championship. So you've seen talented players, even though you say that this team uh, is more talented. And I think when you look at the top guys on this team and the skill sets they possess, I think it's easy to see why you would say that. You know, you guys, you're late in the fourth quarter. Uh, you need a big play. Whose hands should the football be in? I mean, there's really one guy, and, and that's Reed. I mean, the guy is just, he's undeniably, like, that guy. Like, you see why he, he's in a position where he's in, you know, because he, he can make that play. Um, and, and guys do count on them. But, I mean, it stands to, I can go to, you know, Waddle too. Look what he did against Baltimore. You know what I mean? He cranked up at the end of the game, got us that, that game-winning touchdown. So there's a number of guys that, that can get it done. I mean, even Mike Gusecki, you know, he, he can get it done too. So there's a lot of different guys that can go out there and just, once you put the ball in their hands, like me, I'm an early, I'm an early guy. <laughs> I guess you could say, like, I, I get the ball early, I make, I make the magic happen. But right. when it comes out, those, you know, we need it. Let's, let's lock, let's lock in. Mm -hmm. That's them guys. I got a sure. request. Can y'all get him to stop grittying? That joint is <laughs> trash. Yeah, he, he said he the veteran. You the vet. You should like, pull him to the side <laughs> and say, don't do that no more. <laughs> Look, man. At the end of the day. I can only control so much. You know what I mean? <laughs> control what you can control. I, that's it. That's it. So, and if he's scoring touchdowns, if he's he scoring problem, touchdowns, right? you just let him be. Come on now. <laughs> like, so, but yeah, now nah, he, uh, Mike, Mike's a great energy guy, man. I, I mean, I was sitting there right next to him. We in the end zone. I'm like, uh, I can't rock with you on this <laughs> no, one. You should have grabbed him and lifted him up off the ground. I wanted no. to, hey, but he just kept no. going. I was like, end zone to end zone. I'm like, all right, bro. Side to side. <laughs> hey, man, uh, for us, bro, like, I think this is, um, this is really what we needed because there's so much going on with Miami right now that's all speculation. Um, are, they, are they as good as they seem in the first three weeks? Is Mike McDaniels the type of coach uh, that can lead this team to the playoffs after Brian Flores getting them, you know, on the precipice uh, the last couple of years. Um, 
I'm gonna switch away from football to end the show because this is something we like to do. And if you've watched the show, you've known this. You have had a road of being cut, a road of working yourself into contention to be the guy, then falling to injury. What would you say has been the biggest pivot that has you at this point, not only believing that your team can reach enormous heights, but that you can still be everything you ever sought out to be? I mean, that's, that's a great way to, you know, put it towards the end. Um, I guess it would just say my determination um, to being great. Like, I said that early on in the show, um, but I really believe that. I feel like if I didn't have that mindset, then I wouldn't be where I'm at, you know. Um, and the supporting cast, you know, my wife, she, mentally, she's probably one of the toughest people I know. So, you know, just having her in my corner telling me, like, hey, look, you know, you, I mean, there was a moment when I got cut by the Browns, you know, I made the 53-man roster. The next day, we, we went to celebrate that night had a nice little steak dinner, you know, enjoyed it. It's my second year in the league. Um, and then the following day, my wife, truthfully, she had a bridal shower that day. And that was the same day I got cut. So I had to call her dad up and, and he was with the ladies. You know, he, he organized and helping around the, the event, or whatever. And I called him, I'm like, hey man, you know, I, I don't know how to tell you this. I ain't telling Devin, <laughs> I ain't telling my wife. I'm damn sure I ain't telling my mother-in-law, <laughs> <laughs> but I got cut, and he was just like, "All right, well, we're gonna talk about it when you get home. When we get home, when we get done with this event." Wife and in-laws came to the, the our apartment in Cleveland, and I had a conversation with them after you know being cut so many times, and I asked them. I said, "Hey, look, what do y'all think? Like moving forward, because this this whole moving around, like you know." I had to pack suitcases in Philly to come to Miami. Like I had left my, all my stuff. I was just about to sign a lease. It's all, it's all different. Like I hate this moment. And they're like, how much do you love to get? My wife asked me, she's like, how much you love the game? I was like, I've been in it for some years now. You know, I've, I've been playing since I was seven. And she looked at me and she was like, well, that's your answer right there. Why well, stop? And so at that moment that I saw, I was like, yeah, it's about, it's about having that mental, that mental fortitude to go out there and just put it all on the line, give it your best. Like, no matter what everybody says outside of what you can control, what outside of those lines, like all that matters is your legacy. And my legacy has always been, I want a gold jacket. And so that's that's what I would like to leave you guys with. Like, no matter what, man, just keep fighting. Like, it, it's gonna pay off. Just you just gotta have that conviction and believe in it. Because if you don't, then you're not going to be anywhere, really. <laughs> like, <laughs> Straight up. Like, and we all have that. Like, we all have that, that conviction. Like, okay, look, I want to be the best DB. I want to be the best lineman. I want to be the best running back. I want to be the, like, convict that. Like, be convicted in it. Then it's going to pay off for you. So. Man, enough said. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why didn't you choose UM, man? <laughs> Hold up. Limitless. Take a stomach cap, pin in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the vision, I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Take a stomach cap, pin in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission.